Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts chill out video. We're going to go through a very nice gift that was given to me by a fellow YouTuber named Donato Giallo. I will link him down below. Go check out his channel. We're going to go through this book that he sent to me. It's called Beyond Terror, the films of Lucio Fulci by Stephen Thrower. It's a very thick hardcover book. Kind of a coffee table style book and we have the ladies here with me tonight there's miss hannah and miss heidi i turned the lights out to get a little ambiance i got a couple of candles lit here that is a pumpkin spice glade candle and over here is a three wick candle i think it's some kind of an autumn blend it smells really good it's called scarlet woods i guess but Let's get into the book here and like I said this is just gonna be a chill video I've been having a hard time sleeping lately and I find that when I record videos it relaxes me and hopefully it relaxes you guys too so kick your shoes off get a couple snacks maybe get a, something to drink and we will go through page by page and check out this book I have not gone through it yet myself I wanted to wait to make a video and go through it with you guys so let's do that here and like I said, it's a hardcover book. It's very heavy, very thick. And the artwork on the cover is amazing already. It's uh, debossed here on the front, and it has kind of a silver foil font, I guess. It says Beyond Terror, the films of Lucio Fulci. And the spine looks really nice. And at the bottom it says it's Fab Press, F-A-B Press. So I will try not to go too fast, but then again, too, I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to try to keep it around 20 to 30 minutes somewhere in there. And here is kind of a index, and it shows all the different titles and subjects that the book covers. And I'm sure there's a lot of Fulci fans out there. I am one myself. If anybody is interested, there is the ISBN number. If you'd like to look this up and purchase it yourself, table of contents 10 different chapters and it looks like it's well over 400 pages I'd say between 430 and 450 there's a foreword by his daughter Antonella Fulci who is on Facebook by the way if you're interested in looking her up and adding her as a friend you can follow She's fan-friendly, and she posts stuff on her Facebook page regarding her father. She'll post old photographs and stuff like that. It's kind of a fan page for the maestro. There's a portrait of Fulci when he was 20. I think he's wearing some kind of military garb. I'm not sure if he was in the military or not. But the pages are very thick, very high quality. You can maybe see that there's a little bit of varnish on the pages to give them that uh, kind of a glossy appearance to them. And you can also see that it does have a ribbon. This is a very nice high quality book. We'll try not to make the pages squeak. I know that is a, a trigger for some people. It's almost like uh, fingernails on a chalkboard when you hear that squeak on the page. A 
lots of information. They show some stills from the films and some retro poster artwork. Everybody knows that scene from Zombie 2, the eyeball splinter that has become a very iconic scene from that film. You can see some of the foreign art for the posters and Asian, German, different stills from the film. Very crisp images. There's a cool image right there. Has its own page dedicated to the Fulci zombie. That's another iconic scene from the movie. And it's been on many different posters and covers of movies, VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. And it's another movie that when it first came out, it didn't get much attention but it has since grown to cult status among fans today. Wow, really cool. It almost looks like the page is wet. That's how crisp these photos are. And they seem to be showcasing a lot of Fulci Zombie, which I, rightly so, I guess it's his, uh, it's his crown jewel, as far as I'm concerned, for his films. Some of you may disagree. That's fine. I mean, everybody has their own opinion. There's no, no right or wrong answers. But in my opinion, Zombie was his, his best film, or at least my favorite of his. You guys can comment down below. Let me know what your favorite was. And Fulci was really good at his craft for putting out decent, fun movies on a shoestring budget. I mean, some of these movies hardly had a budget at all. And yet, some of them still hold up today. Let's see, who is this lovely actress here? I'm going to take a look. It says... The times were a-changing, Fulci responded to the liberalism of 60s Italy with films like, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce those names, it's, uh, it's all in Italian. And I'll just make myself look foolish like a clown if I stutter and stammer over titles. <laughs> And that is called the Jukebox Kids. So he tried many different genres in his film career. He tried making adventure movies. He made horror movies. He made some drama films. But I think his forte, what he was best at, was the, the horror films. He even made a, a western or two. I'm 
that movie there it says it's called those two in the legion and some of these i am not familiar familiar with i'll be honest about that but that's uh i guess that could be a good thing because it's something i can discover down the road maybe Here's rock and roll, black and white. This one's called the strange type. If any of you guys have any recommendations for a full chief film or two, or maybe if you have a list, you can go ahead and comment that down below. Maybe some obscure titles that you think I wouldn't know or some of the viewers, because there are a lot of people that go down and read the comments section. So if there's uh, any recommendations you have, you can enlighten us and comment down below. That one's called The Maniacs. It's pretty cool how this book is laid out because it talks about, well, the movie and then where it was filmed, who the production company was, who the distributor was, the running time, how it was put out on physical media. For example, this one says it was CG home video in Italy. The censorship shooting period, it talks about when the film was shot, January 1964. So this book is, is uh, chock full of information, anything you would need to know about Fulci's films. Two escapees from Sing Sing. And it looks like that may be a comedy, so. Apparently, Fulci touched on comedies, too, and this is down here at the bottom. This is the comedy section. That one's called Two Secret Agents. That one's called Two Public Menaces. And that one there is called How We Got in Trouble with the Army, 1965, filmed in black and white. That almost looks like Italy's version of Jerry Lewis. There's one called Operation Moon, 002. I guess that's kind of a parody on the 007, right? those two paratroopers from 1965 how we robbed the bank of Italy is it that looks like Ernest Borgnine at first but I don't believe that is looked like a young Ernest Borgnine to me for a minute just when I first saw it How We Stole the Atomic Bomb from 1967. The Long, The Short, The Cat. Also from 1967. There's some of the original poster art in Italian. be honest I'm really not the the biggest comedy fan although I would I would like to check out Fulci's take you know how some of his comedies were but I'm more into like the um, the crime kind of like the uh, police police Teshi or the uh, slashers or the horror movies that's what I'm more into But I do know that there is a time and a place for comedy, so you gotta kinda mix it up a little bit. And definitely, every once in a while, you need to pop on a comedy just to kinda keep yourself sane. And these are still the comedies. I'm gonna kinda flip through a little bit quicker, guys, just to get past the comedies. Okay, now these are the giallos 
This is the giallo section, I believe. It says down at the bottom, build my giallos high. And that title right there is called A Lizard in a Woman's Skin. I'm sure many of you guys have heard of that and watched it. Wait, is that it? It says it's featuring one on top of the other, a lizard in a woman's skin. Don't touch, torture a duckling and the psychic. Yes, this is the poster for Don't Torture a Duckling from 1972. And that is actually the Belgian poster, it says here. And below is erotic goings on at Julia Dewar's London flat in a lizard in a woman's skin from 1971. Blood and Black Lace from Bava. Deep Red from Argento. Bird with the Crystal Plumage, also Argento. A Bay of Blood, Mario Bava. And torso, Sergio Martino, 1973. And that is Jennifer O'Neill in The Psychic. What do, let's see here. That is, don't torture a duckling. What a really cool book. These are really nice to have. They're packed full of information and they're really nice collector's items too. I'm sure something like this would hold its value and not only that, but go up in price over time. So I know these were printed in limited amounts. And once they go out of print and they're out of print for a while, they're harder to find. You could find them on secondary markets and then you gotta, you know, you gotta consider what the conditions are in some of these. Some people don't take care of their stuff as much as others. And then the editions that are, you know, more mint are definitely worth more than the ones that are beat up. They may have yellowed pages or rips or Dinged corners, creases, stuff like that. As long as you take care of your stuff and you're very careful and make sure that you store it properly so it doesn't get, you know, weathered by the elements, you know, sun beating on it or kids getting at it, pets getting at it. These things will last a long, long time. That's a classic image right there. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff here. Not that the rest of it wasn't. I'm just saying this is like the the cherry on top of the uh, Sunday that we were just looking at already. That is Florinda Balkin as Carol Hammond in a lizard in a woman's skin. And on this page is the Spanish press sheet for one on top of the other. I don't think I've ever seen that one. It looks like it's more of in kind of an erotica, I think, just from judging a cover. It says, um, 
This is the horrific fate of La Macchiara. Looks like she's she's either getting whipped with chains or she's getting chained to the wall. I'm not really sure what's going on there. There is an image. It says uh, Patrizia and Martelli believe the priest's mother, Ariella, could be shielding her son or may even be responsible for the murders herself. I really love the retro vibe in this book. With the old black and white photos, the old 70s poster art and covers for different releases over the years. And he did try his hand at adventure type films. It says in this section they're going to be going over Massacre Time, Beatrice Sensi or Chensi, however you want to pronounce that, White Fang, Challenge to White Fang, The Four of the Apocalypse, Silver Saddle, The Smuggler, Conquest, and Rome 2033, The Fighter Centurions. Check that out, that is beautiful. If you guys have ever seen the movie Conquest, I recommend checking it out. It's, is it a good movie? No, it's not a good movie, but it's a lot of fun and it's very, very low budget. But just to see what uh, Fulci did with that low budget, he made the movie fun. There's that White Fang movie that they were talking about. I'm gonna have to check that one out. See if I can get a copy of that. I would definitely like to watch White Fang and then there was a sequel to it. Action superstar Fred Williamson. Right there. Fred the Hammer. Just recently watched a movie that my friend Darren Crowder sent to me called VH, um, VFW. VFW stands for Veterans of Foreign War. It was kind of a, a take on Assault on Precinct 13, kind of, kind of a modern day take on that. I thought it was really good. I thought it was well done. And Fred the Hammer Williamson was in that film. Here are some of the spaghetti westerns that were also very fun. I think uh, Fulci's best work was his horror stuff, but he also did very good work on his westerns too. I'm definitely gonna check that one out. I'm gonna see if I can find a copy of that on eBay, even if it's only on DVD. I'm gonna, if anybody knows if that has a decent release, let me know. Starring Franco Nero too. I'm surprised a company like 88 Films didn't put that out in their Italian line or Vinegar Syndrome with a nice slipcover. That is uh, Tomas Milian, by the way, in Four of the Apocalypse. I've seen that movie a few times. That's a good movie. I believe it had a nice release from Blue Underground or Anchor Bay. 
I think it was Blue Underground. There's Conquest that recently has a Blu-ray release from Scorpion releasing within the last couple of years that came out on Blu-ray, and it looks really good. Check out that little monster. And then there's the sequel, I assume, called Challenge to White Fang. And it looks like that's a take from Jack London's novel, White Fang, which there have been many renditions of that movie over the years. I would like to see Fulci's take on that. Franco Nero again. Silver Saddle from 1978. And then there's the Italian poster art advertising the film. The Smuggler, 1980. It looks like it was also called Luca the Smuggler. I'm not familiar with that film. There's Conquest again, 1983. Fighting Force, Drake and Sarah. Woe be unto him who opens one of these seven gateways to hell, because through that gateway evil will invade the world, the book of Ibon, or Abon, however you pronounce that. Beautiful. Now we're into the gothic hells and gruesome visions. And in this little segment here, we're going to go over City of the Living Dead, The Black Cat, The Beyond, The House by the Cemetery, and Manhattan Baby. All of which have Blu-ray releases. And if you guys don't have them, you should really consider picking those up. Add those to your collection. All of those are very fun watches. Gonna pick up the pace a little bit. I'm almost at a half hour already. Not that I want to rush through this, but I didn't want to make this a very, very long video. You know, I, I didn't mind going to 30 minutes. Looks like it's gonna be over that. And I realize you guys have a lot to do. I mean, I appreciate spending you spending any time with me, but. I know that time is precious too. There's a lot of other things you could be doing than watching these long videos. But if you wanted to kind of chop them up and watch them in segments, that's fine. Very pretty. David Warbeck, also known as David Mitchell, born on November 17th, 1941, and he died in London July 23rd, 1997. He was a, a genre actor. He was in a lot of these Italian films. Excellent movie, City of the Living Dead. A 
always had really good cover art too. Very creepy scene when the priest hangs himself in the graveyard. Always kind of gave me the willies. Another iconic scene with that <laughs> drill through the temple or cheek area. <coughs> Black Cat 81. Uh, it was it was a decent watch. Middle of the road for me. It, it was a fun watch, but it wasn't a great movie. But still, it was worth watching. If you haven't watched it, I would recommend giving it at least one watch. Maybe you'll like it more than I did, but it is definitely worthy of at least one view. So if you guys made it this far, we're beyond 30 minutes now, leave a, ha leave a comment, hashtag Fulci. It kind of gives me a wink and a nod that you guys are still with me here and you watched the whole video. And it, it also helps my channel to, my very small channel to grow. Anytime you get comments and thumbs up and views, it's good for the algorithm and helps my little channel grow and I really appreciate you guys giving me support like that. There's a cool scene with the knife going through the mouth from the back of the head. And that reminds me of some of the old drive-in, you know, advertising. That's how it would, that's what it reminds me of. Drive-ins would have posters like that kind of draw you in to want to watch the movies. I really miss those days and I was hoping, you know, with the situation that we're in now with the quarantines and all that and it sounds like it's starting to get worse again. I try not to talk about that on the channel, but I was hoping that would be a there would be a resurgence of drive-in theaters because of this, you know, because you kind of socially distance yourself inside your own vehicle. I would love for the drive-ins to come back. Manhattan Baby from 1982. That is the British cover that was a creepy movie that little kid was creepy there we go one of my favorite covers of all time that is beautiful love it there's an image from Manhattan baby Again, these images are so clear and crisp that it almost looks like if I touch that, it's going to be wet. I'm not sure if the, uh, I film on a, or I record on a iPhone X. So I'm not sure if it's kind of uh, giving you guys that same view that I'm seeing in real life here. But 
I mean, it looks wet. It looks like if you touch it, you need to go get a little hanky or something to wipe your hands off. Beautiful. If you guys hear some barking in the background, I have some new neighbors that moved to the east side of my house and they have a German Shepherd and that dog barks all the time. Another classic, iconic image right there. The Beyond. Milky white eyeballs. Uh, let me see if I can find out where that cover came from. It doesn't say. Another very fun movie, The House by the Cemetery. Beautiful. Freudstein came out of his grave. different uh, covers and poster arts from different parts of the world. One of my favorites from Fulci is the New York Ripper, good slasher film. So it looks like a lot of these images here have some nudity in them, so I'm just going to kind of keep pushing forward here. There's a cool scene from the New York Ripper. I'd be curious to know from you guys who are watching this, what are your favorite Fulci films? If you want to give me your top five down below, I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, please don't forget to check the link down below. I'm going to share that for Donato's YouTube 
page, his channel. And you guys can go over and tell him what a nice guy he is for gifting this to me. And while you're over there, subscribe and check out his videos. Show him some love and support. Help his channel grow. He would appreciate that and I would appreciate that. And you guys will be watching some good content on his channel. So you will appreciate it too. Enigma also has an awesome cover. I remember that on VHS back in the day. And a lot of these have been released on Blu-ray from different companies. Eighty-eight Films has released quite a few of these Italian titles in their Italian collection line that they have. There's Garetta, Rosemary Garetta from Demons. That was a uh, Lamberto Babo film. I guess they're just kind of showing parallels to different directors. This is one I've not seen either. I know there have been a couple of different renditions of this film from the old uh, children's story, Hansel and Gretel. The, um, the Grimm mother, what is it? Uh, the Grimm fairy tales. And I gotta check some of those out. Sodoma's Ghost. I think I have that on VHS, or I had it at one point. Touch of Death from 1991. It says it was filmed in 88, but I think it was released 91. Or maybe that's when it got a US release. I'm not sure about that. So we're kind of getting into the last little segment but we still have a little bit to go yet so this movie or this video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be but since we're giving it the proper time that it deserves I don't want to rush the end so I'm just going to keep going at this pace demonia That just had a, a recent release from Severin Films, and uh, Donato also gifted that movie to me on Blu-ray with a nice slipcover. I think it was limited to 3,000. So thank you again for that, Donato. There he is in his later years, Fulci. And Donato also gifted me Fulci for fake from Severin with that beautiful lenticular cover. I got all kinds of Fulci goodness in this package that he sent to me recently. And some of the posthumous project, some of the, I, I suppose these are titles that were released or part of projects that were released after his death. The Sword of Siegfried. I'm not familiar with it. Blast Fighter, however, I am familiar with. And it says in small type there, it's a title that caused a permanent rift between Fulci and Sarchetti. I wonder what that was about. I have to do a little reading. Let's see how a movie ruined two guys' friendship. I love these full page color ads like that. It's beautiful. Get that. Wow. 
so much to take in. That cover there is beautiful too. A Cat in the Brain, also known as Nightmare Concert, and that, that image is just beautiful. Always been one of my favorite images right there. There's that zombie from Zombie 2 or Zombie Flesh Eaters. The movie with five or six different titles. There's an image from the Beyond. I'm sure you guys have all seen the Beyond. Attack the Eye, Seduce the Ear. Chapter 10, and this is talking about the movie soundtracks over the years, over the decades. So this book really goes in depth and it covers every aspect of every movie that Fulci directed. This is everything you need to know about Fulci and his movies all in one book. Ennio Morricone. Let me know if you guys own this book or if you plan on picking it up now that you have seen the, I guess, uh, overview of it. would be talking about the censorship of his movies I, I would imagine the BBFC um, I know the the British used to censor quite a bit of their movies and not so much anymore but a lot of the movies that were released in the 70s and 80s were highly cut and censored and they called them video nasties Censorship is never a good thing, <laughs> ever. There are some of the releases over the years. You can see some of the Shameless releases, some Arrow Video releases. Nice image from the Beyond. And these are the film credits for Fulci. Some of his other film credits. A lot of small type in here. Here's uh, Christopher George. He was always a really good actor. And he ended up marrying Linda Day and she became obviously Linda Day George and they were in a few movies together but he was always fun to watch always a very stoic actor he was really good there's Ray Lovelock he was also a really really good actor he was uh, Ray Lovelock was half British and half Italian funny story about him is he was discovered he was in a rock and roll band with Tomas Milian if you can believe that how cool would that be two genre actors who were in the same band together before they started acting but anyway he was discovered while he was performing music in this band and uh, that got him his first break and he was in a lot of these movies and he was a very very good actor I just recently watched him in uh, let sleeping corpses lie um, it's also called the living dead at the manchester morgue and he was the uh, star in that movie but he's been in a lot of movies he's a really really good solid actor he's passed away now i think he just recently 
passed away within the last uh, four or five years or so. I think he was only in his 60s when he died. It, I think he had cancer. He was a heavy smoker. And there's, speaking of Tomas Milian, he's passed away now too. He died in 2017, it says there. But uh, he was another great actor. A little piece here on Franco Nero. He's still with us. Thankfully, he's a great actor. There's Jennifer O'Neill. She was a beauty. Elka Summer, John Savage, Jean Sorel, Fabio Tessi, Testi, and this is the index. So it just basically tells you which subjects are on what page, and then you get another close-up of that splinter eye and then a, like a little outro here for the maestro and it's also advertising Nightmare USA also from Stephen Thrower so that was a long video over 50 minutes I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you guys are relaxed a little bit I know I feel a lot more relaxed but uh, yeah, make sure you check out that link down below. It'd mean a lot to me if you guys could go over and show a little support to Donato. Tell him what a great guy he is for sending me this stuff. And because uh, I know this stuff is not cheap, you know. And also, I sent him a package. So if you want to see what I sent to him, it should be arriving any day now. On his, maybe he'll do an unboxing on his channel. We'll see what he decides to do. But it says it has a. Uh, Dozens of spectacular full-color pages and almost 1,200 illustrations in all. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, end the video here, guys, for Miss Hannah and Miss Heidi. Everybody here is in chill mode. I think I'm going to go pop a movie on and get ready to go to bed pretty soon. It's about 10 o'clock p.m. here on Friday the 13th. That's another thing. Happy Friday the 13th to you guys. All right, take care, and I will see you in the next video. Later.